hey, so I see a lot of railroad tutorials out there for this game. Um, I have been playing the railroads quite a bit, and I've stuck with a couple of simple principles, and I'll just apply it to everywhere. Um, one thing is this. This is a common railroad setup with two directions. One rail going west, one rail going east. You can do the same thing north and south, whatever. Um, the way you do one directional rails is you use a semaphore, a signal, I'll just call them a signal, and you place them and you can toggle them. I'll take, I'll get rid of this one. Um, so you can use that. Uh, I pretty much use only one ways, um, and that is so that you have basically a loop, a loop-based system, and trains won't get stuck if they always have a dedicated direction they can go. Another principle is the collision domains, or blocks, or sections, um, and signals are what separate and create the individual blocks, sections, segments collision domains, whatever you want to call them. As a networker, I like to call them collision domains, uh, technical term. So a collision domain is anywhere that is touching, um, that is not separated by signal. Um, and that will include like this intersection or between these two. This is a collision domain. This one down here is a collision domain. Um, trains will not, multiple trains will not occupy collision domains. Um, only one can at a time. Another one will not enter a section that another train is already in. So let's look at this. I don't have chain signals here. Best practice is to have chain signals here. But let me show you what happens if you don't put chain signals in a intersection like this. I'm going to turn the power on and my electric trains will all start running. And they are all destined to go to this location. So the first thing you'll notice is you'll see the signals turning red behind them. That's what I was talking about. Trains will not occupy the same collision domain together. So this is what happens if you don't have a, um, a chain signal to keep the intersection available. This train will not go back to the west because this intersection is used. This collision domain is already occupied by this train. So the way we can remedy this temporarily is separate this, but this is not how we want to go. I like to keep intersections as one block. You can get very fine-tuned with this and make these, indi make, make these individual segments, but I'm pretty straightforward. It's kind of like a roundabout. It just is, it's just the wild west. Uh, okay, so let's get this guy going. And let's do that this time by blocking this off. So now that there are these chain signals, let me show what that means. So in chain signals do the exact same thing that reg regular signals will do. They separate collision domains. Except they also look to the next collision domain in advance. They look to the next section that the train is destined to go in advance. So these two chain signals see that the next hop, this one, which is where the trains want to go, is already occupied. So not only does it check the next location, it checks the one beyond that. It checks one, two. Two hops. And the blue is signifying that it's partially blocked. So if the train was actually meant to go this direction, east, over here, that's still available. And so the train would have continued. But because it wanted to go up here and this one's occupied, then this train's going to wait. That's what a chain signal does. It actually is available or unavailable. It's stop or go depending on which way the train wants to go. In this case, because there's two different destinations. So those are two things to consider, is separation, which is signals, and 
chain signals, which is two hops. Um, one piece of advice is to make sure that one path doesn't block another so you don't end up with deadlock. One possible way to do that is if you try to do this. If you try to mix too many collision domains here, then you could end up with a deadlock. Maybe not necessarily this one, but something like this where you have the in and then the out back to the on-ramps. We'll call those on-ramps as if this is a highway. I like to keep something like this, since it's so close together, as one big intersection, one big block. So I have the trains coming in here. Also one tip, just from playing. One pro tip is make sure that the queue section is the longer one. That and you have a couple of blocks here. So you want the train to come into the station and as it clears the highway, it frees up the highway. And then maybe you'd have a couple more spots for other trains to queue up if multiple trains are gonna use this intersection. That's another principle. Let's look at a simpler one. Instead of using two-way, if you've got just a bare bones train network, let me show you another option. Here's your more bare bones setup here. This is a single rail, two directions, and I've got just two direction signals here separating this. But one key to make this work is to only have adjacent destination and source blocks. So trains are not going to mutually block each other in because they're each going to take turns going into this one block. If you added another block here and you don't make these chains, then you're going to have a problem where these other trains are going to block in the exit for the first train. Let's turn this on so I can show this. This is super basic. And if you're just getting your train network started, just delivering certain goods, this is a good way to start. I've done this if I didn't want to invest in a train highway. So they're all waiting. Let's do an experiment. Let's make these chain signals. And make this a Still went for it. Let's tell him to go back. Yeah, this one has the right away this time. Alright, so this is what chain signals are supposed to do. That first occurrence was just a hiccup because I had just placed a signal. It hadn't calculated yet. It hadn't been able to check one or two hops out. So if you're going to do a separation here, and sometimes you need to make a separation, um, then the chain signals will work. Maybe except for the first entry. If you've got trains already waiting on the signals and you're making changes to the signals, who knows what's going to happen. So that's a basic principle. Having a common rail is also useful uh, instead of putting your electric connection here you can put the gas station here through this path that way your four trains if they need to get diesel fuel they can get to it on the common rail without blocking each other that's the simplest cheapest way of doing that too that's my suggestion that's some signal principles that i recommend just keep in mind that they separate zones and chain signals look one two hops out